They're driving a TVR down a farm track. Why would you do that? Today you find me at work. Doesn't look it, does it? Um, I am, look. That's a car. It's a TVR 390 SE, and it's the first car to appear on this uh, channel I'm doing that isn't mine. Uh, this is a customer's car, and it's going home tomorrow. It's been with me for three years nearly, I would say. Been a bit of a, an ordeal, this one, a long haul, but we're finally there. And I thought, as I've got to take it out for one last test drive, why don't I bring you with me? So the TVR 390 SE, this is uh, a 1987 car. They're quite rare because the 390 SE isn't actually a car that TVR offered for sale. Originally, you would have bought one of these in the 80s as a 350i, which looks pretty similar, but is lacking a few things. Um, the crazy splitter on the front there being one of them. Um, and the skirts, I believe, I think were one of the other things. The 390 SE was actually a pack and it bought you a crazy rear diffuser and a huge exhaust and sometimes it bought you a crazy spoiler but this one doesn't have it and it bought you some other bits and bobs like a vented bonnet and things like that. To be honest I'm going to be careful about what I say because there are so many different options and specs and things on wedges that it could have been either or for a 350i. The main thing about the 390 SE over 350i is the engine in the normal 350i you've got a three and a half litre rover v8 as most tvrs had at the time uh, around about 100 and who knows 180 190 horsepower apparently um, but this doesn't it does have a rover v8 but it's a rover v8 with a difference if i pop the bonnet which opens forwards on gas struts no less look at that looks like a rover v8 is a rover v8 has the fuel system from a 3.5 and the flapper airflow meter there only it's not a 3.5 it is a 3.9 oh so you say it will be the 3.9 as fitted to the vas and the four litre chimera and the pre-cat griffith and everything like that well no, because what this is, is an NCK 3.9. Instead of being 3,948 cc or whatever they are, this one is 3,905. It is a bored out stroked uh, 3.5, which was made by NTK. Uh, stands for North Coventry Kawasaki. Formerly, or later, to become TVR Power. Now, this particular engine was only made in these cars and the engine number was changed from whatever Rover put it down as to NTK something something something. I don't know how many engines they made but there weren't many. I think we're probably in the, the hundreds. Rating on it was about 270 horsepower or something like that. They do behave slightly differently to a normal Rover V8. But what I'm going to do now is hop behind the wheel. Um, the reason this car is out on a drive today in this lovely neck of the woods, it is actually quite beautiful here, very peaceful until people in off-roaders drive past, uh, is, um, yeah, take this car out on a test drive and give it one last check and explain a bit about the car, what it's been in for, why it's been here for so long and what it's like to drive. Right, so, 390 SE, we're going to leave those people over there in that field to do whatever they're doing. Ugh. And the first thing you notice when you get inside a TVR wedge, as this is known, is uh, how cramped it is. Because for such a big car, and in terms of width, this is probably one of the wider TVRs out there. It's just so cramped. The indicator, I could just about fit my hand. If I put the indicator down, I can't fit actually fit my hand between the centre console and the end of it. The wiper is here, and in the off position, it's so close to my knee that I'm almost inadvertently turning it on all the time. Um, ergonomically, it's a bit of a mess, but then that is what TVRs were like at the time. The wedge, of course, which is what this car is known as, um, started off life as the Tasman, which was a 2.8 litre V6 version of, the, of this car. And uh, that was not a Peter Wheeler 
um, era car. That was a Martin Lilly era car. Um, the fellow who owned TVR before Peter Wheeler. Peter Wheeler being the man uh, credited with the Griffith, the Chimera, the S, Cerbera. He he was the one behind all that lot. TVR's heyday, if you like, the golden era. This was before that. Now he did come in and he did he was behind the V8. Um, versions of the wedge and the SE was probably his brainchild but um, you can tell when you sat in them it's quite different to a later TVR even even a Griffith or a Chimera which only came you know, less than a decade later driving position is quite different the pedals are offset quite a lot to the left uh, to the right um, the driving position is much more like you'd find in a normal car it's not quite just you know oh yeah he's licking on um, it's not sort of quite what you'd call a sports car in terms of the driving position the wheel is offset to the left slightly pedals off to the right that's perhaps not so odd but the floor dips away so you, you don't sit with your legs out straight like you do in uh, god my hands are dirty um like you do in a chimera where you're sort of driving like that you, you, you sort of sit with your legs pointing down like a, a normal car um, the handbrake is right up here very high um yeah it, it's odd um this particular car, I'll talk about the condition of this car. People will be looking at us going, oh, what's going on with that? Oh, the wood's all broken. Oh, there's no wood there. Oh, it's a mess. Oh, did you see that chip on the paint? Oh, that scratch and this sort of thing. We'll get to that. Um, but, um, but yeah, in terms of the wedge itself, I mean, the, the, it's comfy enough, but you are always sat against this, this door card. And, uh, yeah, it's just a bit of an odd car to sit in. The windscreen is so close. The camera must be so close to the uh to the sun visor and then the windscreen comes right back here and it's it's there and you can bend it i mean the build quality it, the, the wedges are the, probably the cars that give tvr the reputation if i'm honest um they are uh challenging is probably the kindest way to put it but they were also some of the craziest and most advanced tvr uh, cars that were made people look at cars like the Cerbera um, and the, the Tamora the Tusk and everything like that and think well they're all complex yes they are but for its time this was the cars that followed this the where uh, the S sorry the Chimera the Griffith they're all more simple than this this is uh, a lot more advanced a lot more effort to build one of these um, and so much to go into it so many components went into these cars it's, it's just it's it's yeah the build time or something like these was reportedly something like 400 hours whereas the s that followed it was only about 250 uh, and that was one of peter wheeler's first changes he decided that the wedge was not a profitable car to build and to be fair he was probably right now these engines this this trick nck rover v8 that this car's got was only available in the wedge and it wasn't just a 390 there were 420s I think there was a 430, um, there was a 450, they did supercharged versions, they were called SX rather than SE. They, oh, a lot of trick Rover V8s went into wedges that didn't go into other TVRs, only really the, I mean, the Griffith 4.3 big valve and very rare 4.5 big valve, which did have the 450 SE engine from the wedge. That's really the only ones that got it in road cars, everything else is fairly standard. But yeah, it's... Um, it's it's quite a place to sit it's quite you know the visibility is not too bad actually the pillar is it comes back so far that although you, you think it'd be right in your eye line but it's not because you've kind of got vision here where you'd normally have a pillar so it actually makes it quite easy the mirrors are good and uh, they're tvr's own these ones it's a big fiberglass housing they're broken of course you can't adjust them they're supposed to be electric but the motors are burnt out or well, the gearbox is burnt out in the motors um dials are i mean they're all there uh, I don't know what the column stalks are out of. It looks a bit BL. There's a, a bit of a mix of bits going on with this. We've got a single wiper. How about that? Um, the switch gear is very Rover from the 70s. Um, the light switch down here and of course. Pop-up headlights. One of the coolest things about it. Um, yeah, we've got... Uh, battery voltage, oil pressure, speedo, revs, coolant temperature, and fuel. Um, both fuel tanks. This car has two fuel tanks. Yeah, it's kind of basic but funky. There's a glove box over here. The fuse box is hidden behind that. We've had to 
fit an entirely new fuse box and rewire everything in it because the old one was absolutely knackered. One of many, many jobs that's been done on this car. Um, Metro door handles, I believe, hidden behind TVR's own uh, trim door card there. Some speakers in the back and courtesy lights, none of which work. Um, the roof is a bit tatty. The rear screen you can't see through. But that's not why you're here. Why you're here is for that. Takes a little while for the oil pressure light to go out on wedges uh, because the oil filter in them is remote. It has a remote housing. It's not bolted directly to the engine, so it takes a while for that to all fill up as well. Um, but it just to keep you on your toes for the first few seconds of every startup, looking at the light going, please go out, please go out, please go out. I'm hoping that this uh, drive won't be, uh, there won't be too much noise or whatever. So we'll see how this goes. The first one I've done with a roof off. You have to have the roof off in a TVR, even if it's Baltic like it is now. So, and we're away. I mean, the noise is what attracts most people to these cars. And the wedge was really one of the best sounding cars they made bit of a unique note to the exhaust quite raspy one big silencer uh, underneath us here and then just a load of bends and sections of big ball pipe really that's about it but you don't have to be going balls out in a TVR to enjoy a good drive this kind of road is perfectly enjoyable at, well, it says we're doing 50 I can't help but think that might be slightly Optimistic. I don't think we're going 50, but then maybe we are. It's got very light throttle pedal and you have to kind of arch your foot back a bit not to push it too far down. The driving position is a bit difficult. I'm quite short in the leg and long in the arm, so I suit the Italian car uh, driving positions. But this, even this is, yeah, it's not hurting. I'm not going to moan about it, but it's, it's not ideal. It's certainly nothing like as good as a, a Chimera or something like that. But then the behavior of the engine is quite different in this. In a Chimera, you have to be really, you almost have to treat the throttle with kid gloves because you're worried that if you just prod it ever so slightly, it just shunts you down the road. You get instant torque. Whereas in this, it's, it's quite relaxed actually, the throttle. It's more like driving a Cerbera. Oh, it's, the sun's bright there. Go that way. definitely a louder car I mean I don't know how loud they actually are um, they've got a lovely sort of standard mix it's kind of bassy but raspy distinctive bit of definition but not ridiculously loud not loud for the sake of it you know you get V8s where they've got no silences in the exhaust and they just sound ridiculous it doesn't it just it's just right Nearly hit Mr. Rat there. But yeah, one of the reasons we're out on a test drive is basically one last check over. Um, since this car's been rebuilt, and it has basically been rebuilt mechanically, everything visually is kind of the same as when it came in. Um, but it's been mechanically put back together, um, well, mechanically uh, overhauled. Um, not everything, but a lot of it has been. And I've done probably about 120 miles in it now since the rebuild and it's going back to its uh, owner tomorrow. And basically the purpose of these drives is to give it a chance to brake. If it's gonna brake, brake on me, don't brake on him. Because when you put a car back together after, that's a very pretty house, look at that. Um, when you put a car back together, it's been in a lot of pieces for a long time. You know, you do have to do shakedown miles. You do have to, you have to expect that for the first few months, and I've said this to him as well, he's a test pilot for a little while. Uh, doubly so in this car, because this car was off the road for about 16 years prior to uh, it coming down to us. Um, and unfortunately, it was his, owned by his late father. Uh, he had memories of driving around in this car with his dad. So he's never driven it. The guy who owns this car has never driven it. Um, it was his father's car, his father passed away. 
and it sat there for ages. Why did it come off the road? Who knows? No idea. So it's kind of like, I'm gonna give the brakes a test. There you go, you can go through. Yeah, why did it come off the road in the first place? Who knows? It's a risk. Oh, there's roadkill. I hope I don't hit that with my splitter. The splitter on the front of this car is so, it sticks out a long way. It's, ama it's amazing that it's in one piece, to be honest, because most of them are smashed to bits. But it's fiberglass, luckily, so you can repair it fairly easily. But yeah, it, we don't know why this car was off the road for so long. Neither does he. Which is mildly concerning. The noise just doesn't get boring. The fortune is quite wet and slippy today, and it, it is a car that will bite. Like that. But the little pops and bangs between the gear changers, they're good fun. So yeah, we're basically driving around today uh, for the last time, this is the last time I drive this car, um, and uh, I'm basically keeping an eye on the gauges, trying to get some idea of the behaviour, its quirks and uh, things like that. You know, different cars, especially with TVRs and older cars, have, have different ways of doing things, and what might be abnormal for one car might be normal for another. Um, with TVRs, uh, cars like the Chimera Griffith, I keep going back to them, are much more uniform. They're much more similar um, from one from the other. You can almost say that's not right, that is right. These wedges, they're just, they're a law unto their own. I mean, I've seen the coolant temperature gauge at the moment go from about 60 to 100 and then back to 80 in a matter of a few seconds. And uh, it's not overheating or anything, it's fine. It's got a new radiator, new hoses, new water pump, new camshaft. It's had a lot done to it. Hasn't had everything done. I mean, the basic architecture of the engine is the same. The fuel injection system is uh, also the same. Quite old, quite primitive. I'm not convinced about that at the moment. Um, my, my advice to him is take the car, use it, drive it like this, and see what happens. Um, I'm not convinced that the fuel injection system is at its best. I don't think the fuel delivery, I think the fuel delivery is a bit erratic in it. Um, but, you know, the brakes in these cars are, are not the best. They, they've got a very mushy pedal. Um, inboard discs at the back, uh, as per a Jaguar. Um, and uh, the front end is Granada, uh, Cortina, that kind of era, with princess four pot calipers or two pot calipers as this one might have I can't remember big heavy vented discs on the front I mean the architecture of it is very 70s really it is old compared to the later stuff I mean that's pretty obvious isn't it but even the S that came out in the mid 80s or mid to late 80s was uh, Sierra based whereas this is very much Cortina Capri Granada the 70s gearbox is the rover lt77 as you would expect um this particular one i think this has got a quite a sort after one in it because the ratios feel the ratios feel quite um quite close in places so i think it might be like one of the uh the test boxes i can't remember what the code names for those are but i think it could be one of the sort after boxes and it has a power torque or power lock i should say um, limited slip diff at the back. So, yeah, it's quite happy to kick its back end now. It's got big fat tyres on it. They're brand new as well, brand new Toyos. They don't seem to be able to arrest it at the moment. But I mean, you're doing 30 mile an hour and you can put it in fifth gear and just tickle the throttle. And it will just happily burble along. A lot of TVRs you can't do this in. You'd be kicking them back and shunting and... But this one, it's great. Of course, when you get to the national limit, you can drop it back into third. That's half throttle. That's full throttle. 
But you have to, when you know when you hit full throttle at about three and a half thousand. They say the engine in these, the NCK lump is brilliant. It's uh, very, very pokey in the mid range and it likes to rev a bit more than the standard engines. If you get a 3.9 or 4 litre as TVR called it in a Chimera, it's flat as anything compared to this. But it's just the way it, the way it behaves. It, it's, you can be quite rough with the throttle pedal like that. If I was doing that in a, a Chimera, I'd be <laughs> all the time. Whereas in this, it's pretty easy. Windscreen's a bit dirty. Let's try the, the washer. I'm not amazing, but. Let's have a look at the headlights for a bit. Put the headlights on and it changes the uh, the temperature on the gauge. Sometimes by as much as about five degrees, so make of that what you will. I don't know why it's got a single wiper. Probably because they wanted to be like a Citroen VX. I know it predates the Citroen VX, but shush. The steering is very light. This particular car's got power steering and because of that, it's got quite a quick rack. So it's not lightning fast, but it's pretty quick. Not a lot of feel at all, if I'm honest. There's very little feedback. There's next to no feedback. It's You can feel vibrations through it, but you can feel the whole body vibrating. The ride is uh, it's not amazing. Um, crashy, probably the kindest way to put it. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a sports car. Although I think this is possibly one of the best uh, Grand Touring TVRs you can get. It's part of the test drive, you're getting stuck in traffic and I've been through some towns already. I've been over some bumpy roads and some roads that really give the suspension a workout. It seems to be quite good. Electrics and TVRs can be a bit of a weak point because because the car's fiberglass, you've got no natural earth. Normally with most cars, you'd have the feed wire and everything could just ground to a bit of the car, a bit of the body. For this car, you can't. You have to have a wire going back to the earth point as well. Oh, look, a little tunnel. It's not actually a tunnel, it's a bridge over a disused railway. This should be quite nice. Yeah, quite pleasurable. But yeah, they're not the nicest. I mean, in terms of, if you drive this and then you drive a Chimera, the difference is absolutely night and day between how, how competent they are, how good they are, if I'm honest. But the wedges do have a character. They, they really do. It's quite a unique character that the other stuff doesn't have. Well, all TVRs have a character, but these can be just quite a nice car to bimble around in. If you wanted to go pair in from A to B and set some lap times, this ain't the car for it, I don't think. It's quite heavy as well, as much as anything. These weigh 100 kilos more than a Chimera. But if you just want to cruise, this is great. One of the other things uh, that's really good about these cars which I shall demonstrate now. It's a frankly ridiculous turning circle. It really is. And you, you can't see anything here. Oh, there's a truck coming. There you go, you've hit that sun visor. Now you've hit the window. That's how cramped it is. There's 60. That's about half throttle. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. I think he'll have a lot of fun in this car, but his reasons for wanting this car on the road are obviously quite sentimental, being that this was his, his late father's car. I mean, the amount of money that's been spent on this car to return it to the road, most, most people wouldn't have done it. But this is a perfect example of you, can't, you know, you, can't, you don't always have to put a price on something. You don't always have to evaluate how much something costs 
to see whether it's viable or not. Some things are more important than money. And having this car on the road for him, and I agree with him fully, is. This is the car he, his dad used to drive. And because it hasn't been restored, because this interior is as it was, I mean, this veneer here is hanging off. It's not actually connected. Well, it hasn't fallen off. We've done some fairly big uh, acceleration and it hasn't gone anywhere, although that screen's just come off. It's all just glue that holds TVRs together. That's the problem. And once the glue lets go, you've had it. Yeah, that's come off. The gauges are all starting to steam up. That's fairly normal. I'm such a child. But yeah, you know, some things are more important than what's sensible. And he's going to, I'm just so happy that he's going to get a chance to do what his dad used to do. And it's, I mean, it's January at the moment. It's Baltic out here. It's so cold. But this is perfect weather for these cars. I think it's better than the summer. Not a cloud in the sky. A bit of salt on the road, but we've done the chassis on this car, so he hasn't got to worry about that now. But all the systems seem good. Gear change is good. For one of these gearboxes, it's great. Clutch is a nice weight. It's not too light. It's not too heavy. All the controls are working. Sun's in my eyes. I can't put the sun visor down because it will hit the camera. Oh, I'm going to have to, sorry. I know you can't see now, but otherwise we're going to crash. Uh, so far, the last test drive is going well. Feels good. They're not the smoothest cars. This one's got adjustable uh, gas suspension on it now. But it's fixed on the front. You can only adjust the damper. The spring is a, it's the original Ford setup. The spring goes directly between the wishbone and the, well, not even a wishbone, the uh, track control arm and the chassis. Here. You get a lot of scuttle shake, which is odd because it has a separate chassis, but the body does flex quite a bit. I mean, it's not structural in the slightest, but oh, there's another. What's that? An MG something or other. There we go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. See. Couldn't do that in a Chimera, you wouldn't have the turning circle. Let's try going over the bridge. Actually, let's just stop there because otherwise I'm going to lose this. If I can get that out of there. I don't think I can. No, I can't. That's a bummer. kill this man he's looking going why is there some bloke driving that car with a camera on his head why do people walk with sticks like that is he gonna go skiing he's forgotten his skis more houses I can't afford that one's nice Oh, that's a big pile of poo. Oh, it's quite bumpy, this. Oh. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, okay, let's go this way. A little out of a TVR's comfort zone now. Oh, wow, look at the... 
hills and things. Pretty around here. Not Wales pretty, but not bad. Well, I'm definitely going to be washing this again. Oh, what the hell? What an absolute state it is around here. The dials have steamed up. They do that. Not just this car, just TVRs in general. Older ones. I don't know why. But yeah, this is um, this has turned into a longer drive than I thought because I've taken a wrong turn. And oh god. Yep, I'm definitely gonna be washing it again. Give me a job for the afternoon. Oh dear. Well, really, I'm gonna be washing it. Jet wash time. All I need now is a tractor coming the other way. Oh no. Yeah. For someone who hates washing cars, I've washed this one quite a lot. I've cleaned this car so many times and it still doesn't look like I have. It was that dirty when it got here. It's 16 years off the road and that's outside. So you can imagine what kind of state it was in. It was under a cover, but we spent 24 hours getting it running. I mean, who, what, what a drive in a TVR down a farm track. Why would you do that? That's a stupid idea. Just want to see the big main road again. Why have I ended up down here? I don't know where I went the wrong way. Oh, luckily they've seen me. That's good. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to end up in a field in a minute. I'll get roped into doing some combine harvesting. Look at the diffuser on the back and think, oh, he'd be able to do something with that. And now there's a woman with a dog and, oh dear. She's wondering, why is Francis Bourgeois driving that car? Oh my God. You can't even see the road markings. It's flooded. Ah, there's an old bridge. I'm actually in a flood now. Oh, for Right, that's the old Mion Valley Railway. That means I'm near the main road again. Oh, uh, but I don't know which way, maybe this way. Ah, oh, no, three road. Of course. Oh, no. oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chris, who owns this car. I will clean it. Oh, this has gone badly wrong. You couldn't make it up, could you? All the plans I had for filming have gone out the window and now I've taken this car down a muddy dirt track in between muddy fields through floods. It's going to be absolutely caked. Oh, there's a main road. Oh, wow, I really have gone back where I started. Wow. Well, that went really, really, really wrong. Oh, look, there's an MG again. Another MG on the side of the road. Oh, and look, a Fiesta, a Mark 1 Fiesta. A number plate says Core. Core, look at that. Of course, OR is a local code around here. Oh dear. Oh, this is going to be bad. Oh my god. Oh no. And one of the headlights has gone down. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, that's just brilliant, that is. Something else to go and fix. Oh, no. Well, there we go, an off-road TVR. 
Right, I better go fix that headlight. 